as Secretary General of the Commonwealth, he knows what democratic elections are. He has witnessed them, supervised them, and discussed them with famous world leaders. He knows what genocide is when it is being perpetrated and knows that Nigeria is committing genocide against the people of Eastern Region Biafra, even as we speak. Surely he knows that. Emeka Anyoku is an Igbo man who knows that Nigeria is committing genocide on Ndibo as we speak. Yet he, on October 9, 2009, went to Enugu and started preaching the gospel of one Nigeria to Igbo youths at their annual summit in Enugu. This man knows that Nigeria has destroyed Igbo youth. He knows that Nigeria, using military decrees, seized all our ancestral land, seized the petroleum and gas in our ancestral land, and took over by force all the waterways in our ancestral land. He knows that Nigeria's House of Flani Yoruba oligarchs and the Sokoto Caliphate have stolen billions of dollars of money belonging to oil-bearing communities in our homeland, while leaving our youth poverty-stricken, jobless, and hungry. He knows, he knows that, he knows that Igbo youth is being systematically and comprehensively destroyed by Nigeria, and that when you destroy the youth, you destroy the generations coming after them. He knows that. He knows that there is no democracy in Nigeria, and that there will never be democracy in Nigeria, because the House of Lani Yoruba have been practicing a form of government called dictatorship for thousands of years and will never move away from feudalistic dictatorship. He knows that. He knows that nothing will ever change in Nigeria and that things have kept getting worse for our people year after year. He knows that. Yet, he is preaching to Igbo youth to embrace one Nigeria and to go out and develop one Nigeria. He must be insane. On October 12, 2009, Ndibo and their friends gathered at the University of South Florida to listen to survivors of Asaba Massacre of October 7, 1967. Narrate how Nigerian savages slaughtered more than 700 innocent men who had come to welcome them to their town with their traditional dance. The hall was packed. Men and women, they listened and cried like children as speaker after speaker told their stories of how they survived the murder and mayhem perpetrated by Nigerian soldiers under the command of Jeremiah Mohammed and Colonel Ibrahim Taiwo under the overall directive of General Yakubu Gowan. Philip Asiodu, a native of Asaba, was there. He got up and told the greedy men and women that he has no bitterness against the Nigerians, despite the fact that his brother, Sidney Asiodu, a promising Olympic athlete, was one of those slaughtered by the Nigerian vandals that day. Many of those in the hall were shocked and bewildered. They realized that they did not really know this man called Philip Asiodu. Philip Asiodu was one of the permanent secretaries in Lagos, that advised Gowon to refuse to implement the Aburi Agreement he and others made with Ujuku at Aburi Ghana. If Gowon had implemented that agreement, there would never have been a Biafra-Nigeria war, and the Asaba massacre would never have happened. When Philip Asiodu was informed in Lagos that Moritola Mohammed had murdered his innocent brother, and hundreds of other prominent citizens of Asaba in cold blood. What did he do? Did he ask why? No. Did he protest? No. Did he quit his job in protest? No. Did he try to avenge his brother's death? No. So, what did he do? He just went on sitting in his cozy office in Lagos and being Yakubu Gowan's permanent secretary. In 1969, Yakubu Gowan and his House of Lani Yoruba oligarchs issued a military decree confiscating the petroleum and gas in the ancestral land belonging to Igbo, Ibibio, Efik, Ijo, Ishekiri, Ishan, Isoko, and Durubo communities in Eastern region. What did Philip Asio do, who was permanent secretary in the Ministry of Industry then,
do? What did he say to go on? Nothing. He just went on making more and more money with the blood of his brother and that of his relatives. The house of Fulani Yoruba oligarchs and the Sokoto Caliphate rewarded him with more posts. He became permanent secretary, ministry of mines and power, chairman, Nigerian National Oil Corporation, chairman, NEPA, permanent secretary, ministry of petroleum and energy, chairman, Medlife Limited, chairman, crop steel engineering, chairman, Smith Klein, chairman, West Africa Mills, Chairman, STI Nigeria Limited. Chairman, Beecham Nigeria. Chairman, Ecobank Transnational Limited. And in 1999, President Olusegun Obasanjo made him his economic advisor. His reward for helping to derail Ekwemi's chance at the presidency. Philip Asiodu didn't even cry for his blood brother. So, how do you expect him to have bitterness? for the mother of 700 men, the cream of Asaba community. Don't even talk about the Igbo. It is an insult to this man who is a profile in courage, bravery, and integrity. This is why he told his fellow Igbo gathered in Florida to go out and develop Nigeria so she will become the vanguard for African progress, whatever that means. He is insane. These two are prominent examples. But there are thousands of our political leaders and elders who are doing exactly the same thing, telling our people to continue to drink the poison of one Nigeria. Edwin Clark invited Tom Polo to his house to celebrate amnesty. Edwin Clark has not told our people what he was celebrating. Was he celebrating the return of the ancestral land mineral resources and water resources of the Ijo, which the House of Fulani Yoruba confiscated in 1969, 1979, and 1998 edicts. Was he celebrating the return of trillions of dollars stolen from his people by the House of Fulani Yoruba oligarchs? Was he celebrating because thousands of innocent Ijo people mindlessly slaughtered by the House of Fulani Yoruba suddenly rose from the dead? What was he celebrating while preaching one Nigeria to Ijo youths? Anthony Aneni, Alex Ekweme, Vincent Obulafo, and their collaborators went to Anambra State and behind closed doors selected Chuku Masoludo as the gubernatorial candidate of the PDP for Anambra when they were supposed to hold the primary election to select a candidate. They know that for thousands of years, the Igbo have practiced representative democracy and have perfected the art of elections so much that democratic election is the mode of choosing a leader in every segment of Igbo society. They have stayed too long in the garbage dump called Nigeria and now smell like garbage and have become indistinguishable from the garbage itself. Emmanuel Iwanyang was in Enugu telling Igbo youths to plunge into one Nigeria, that that is the only savior. He is simply insane. Major General G.C. Iweze, who commanded Nigerian forces in Liberia, was lamenting his premature retirement, saying that he was retired because he is Igbo. Then, he remembered that he had helped Nigeria fight Biafra, and wondered why the caliphate is throwing him in the garbage dump now. Hey, they used you, they abused you, and they threw you in the garbage. Get used to it. He is still preaching one Nigeria to our youths. Major General Ike Machuku, Rear Admiral Mike Ahigbe, Admiral Augustus Aikomo, Major General Godwin Abe, Tayo Abata, Major General Obumudia, and hundreds of them all over Eastern Region, who have been used like toilet paper by the House of Lani Yoruba oligarchs, are still preaching one Nigeria to our youths. If it is not insanity, please tell us what it is. We remind our youths once again that these people and all the others like them are the reason you are suffering. They are the reason you have been in bondage. They are the reason the House of Fulani Yoruba oligarchs and the Sokoto Caliphate are treating you like slaves. 
the, uh, the reason the world is not listening to your cries for freedom, justice, self-determination, and independence, these people who are preaching one Nigeria to you and to world leaders are your worst enemies. They care only about the money Nigerian savages give them. They don't care whether all of you die. They are worse than slave traders. They have no conscience. They have no sympathy. They have no remorse. Unless you do something very drastic about these people, you and your families will remain perpetual slaves to the Hausa Fulani Yoruba oligarchs and the Sokoto Caliphate.